So here we go. Welcome back to another Insight video. And today I'm joined by good old Chris Webb as we discuss Town's new signing from Plymouth, uh, Pinuche Kamara. Chris, thanks so much for joining me, first of all. How are you doing? I'm good, buddy. Yeah, pleasure. Nice to uh, meet you again and see you again. Hopefully uh, we can see each other next year in a championship, eh? Yes, mate, definitely, definitely. And, uh, well, I know Town fans are excited about this one. Um, let's go and get some insight on Panuche Kamara. Um, he's been a fantastic player for you guys at Plymouth. Uh, what's your thoughts overall um, on the news that he's signing for Town? It's a, it's a strange one, really, because I think if you rolled back 12 months ago and said that this, this deal had taken place, I think Argyle fans would be absolutely devastated and be saying to the club and the board, like, you know, it's a real lack of ambition to be selling to you know, what would be deemed at this point in time as a rival for promotion, you know, what are you doing, you know, uh, and, and maybe sort of like questioning the club's ambition. But, it, you know, Panucci put in a transfer request at the back end of last year because the club obviously offered him a new deal and the club has a policy they don't of not letting players uh, run into their last year of their deal and then leaving on a free at the end. So the club offered him a new deal. Um, I think, he, you know, he's definitely in a top two or three of our, of our best players. Fans really, really hope he'd sign I think it became apparent that he wouldn't. Uh, there's lots of noise about that being led by his agent, um, you know, encouraging him to, you know, he, maybe he could get bigger and better things. And I think the talk at the time was that he wanted to move to the championship. And when he turned down his deal that they put on a table, maybe seeing if Argyle made the playoffs, which we, did, we didn't clearly. And then he wanted a championship move. And it's played out over the summer and there's been talk of him being injured. Is he injured? Is he not injured? All the rumour stuff and all that. And then, it, you know, he's been out of the squad even in the last couple of games. Uh, and obviously, we've, stopped, we've, we've continued to do OK. So he's almost gone from being at the forefront of the fans' mind with fans desperate for him to re-sign to, like, sadly, like, semi-forgotten. Uh, at the same time, from, from your perspective, you, you're going to get a great player. You know, a really, really good player. And I think, you know, from our perspective, getting half a million quid for a player that's not on the bench at the minute for the reasons I've just gone through, is, is probably a decent bit of business in this league as well. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I think when the name got dropped, people went, oh my God, because he has been a standout player yeah. in this division for you guys. Um, you know, you guys have been uh, sort of dark horses of this division. A lot of people, you went Plymouth, play playoffs, promotion chasers. But you've been playing some good football. Um, of course, under Ryan Lowe, then Schumacher now. Um, let's talk about Kamara as a player then. Um, as I said, he's been a standout in League One. What's the main attributes that you like of him? What's his strengths? Uh, energy, I would say he just just runs and runs a bit of a Duracell bunny. He's just up and down the pitch, both ends, gets himself involved. Uh, he he can chips in with the odd go. Um, I think he you know gets his foot stuck in. He can drive you right up the pitch, particularly if you're away from home and you're, you're struggling. He gets you up the pitch really quickly and at, at pace. Um, he's got a cracking rapport as well. With with, with the, we had a cracking rapport with the Argyle fans. I'm sure he'll have the same. With, with the Ipswich fans. And yeah, I think he's just a decent player. I, I think, to be honest with you, he is a championship player. Um, and probably that's where his ambition lied. And I think I think maybe, I don't know, whether those offers didn't come or whether they weren't good enough, whatever. And, and perhaps he looks at Ipswich as a better vehicle to get himself to the championship quicker than Argyle at this point. And I'm sure probably there's finance involved in that as well, significantly improving his wages from what he'd be on with us. Indeed. And uh, let's talk about, as you say, he's an energetic midfielder. Mm. Um, he box to box. He can play, you know, he's very versatile. And that's what Kieran McKenna wants in these players, play different positions. Um, but what's the things he still needs to work on? You know, he's 25 years of age. Um, you know, he's another season in League One. What are the main attributes you think he needs to improve on? Um, I think composure. Like there, there are times when you, you think, you know, um, you think, wow, this this guy could play in the Premier League. You know, he's it's, it's just unbelievable. And there are other times when you think, like, how, how is he a professional footballer? He is like a bit of like one. But but what has happened over his time at Argyle is you're seeing more of the top stuff, like more of the consistency, you know. But I think composure on the ball, finishing as well, gets himself in some fantastic positions and his goal ratio doesn't match up to that. You know, he chipped in with a, a few last season, but for the positions he put himself in, probably should have had at least half a dozen more goals. Um, and, and I think that, you know, some of that will come as he moves through the leagues with, he'll, he'll meet better coaches, meet, you know, maybe people can get more out of him. But he is a much improved player than the one we got from Crawley a couple of years ago. So I suppose his view now will be he'll look to take the next step with you guys. Indeed, yeah. He's had an interesting route. You know, he started his career in Portugal, then he went... 
to join Barnsley. Then he went to, you know, played non-league with Dulwich Hamlet. Then, as you say, at Crawley, and then he did well for them and then went to you guys. So he's had a very interesting route to where he's at right now. Um, in terms of the, as a player, as a person, um, you were saying off air, you know, he's got a great rapport, you know, with you, you know, as, you know, Plymouth fans, maybe not at the moment because of what's going on, but you said he could become a cult figure. Is he, is that, that's just his character and when he celebrates goals and stuff? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. There's a number of things like, yeah, he's very good interacting with the fans off the pitch. Um, I think on the pitch, all football fans, regardless of what team you support, love someone who's putting their foot in, you know, and, get, you know, and, and not afraid to go into a taco. I think you score a goal, he's the first to celebrate. You know, you get a corner and he's he's up there, he's geeing the fans up and giving it some. Um, and, you know, he's, he's pretty active uh, online as well in, in encouraging interaction with fans. He also, when he came to us, he could hardly speak any English and, and he's, he's hugely sort of improved his, his English over the time and he, and he really, really tries on that. And I think he genuinely, over his time, has, you know, apart from the last couple of months when it's sort of gone a bit sour, has come across as just a really decent human human being and the Argyle fans particularly when he made his international debut were so so proud of him and I'm sure like over time things will unwind and maybe that more truth will come out and it, but I go back to what I said at the start it feels a little bit like an agent driven decision but like at the end of the day he you know he he wants to move and like you know you and you now, now pick up a, a really talented player we pick up a decent amount of money and we're still left with a squad we're happy with so it's weirdly one of those deals probably everyone's okay with, I suppose, you know, apart from maybe I would say, you know, um, you know, that, that little niggling element of, of, of if you, we are really looking to compete at the top end of the division, getting rid of one of your players to, uh, you know, a rival. But I suppose, you know, for a play, the alternative of that is no money this time next year. And he sat, he sat on the bench all season, which just really isn't tenable, is it? No, because I think I look, was reading. You know, you guys got him up on a free transfer when he when he signed from Crawley. So yeah. you made profit. I know that's a couple of years ago now, but you made profit on a on a player. And as you say, he's out. He's out of contract next summer. So getting a fee for any sort of player is, is perfect. And you know, we're going to be playing live on Sky um, mm. at Home Park later in September. So that will be an interesting homecoming for Kamara if he's going to play. He's going to feature. Um, what do you think? The you know, <laughs> as you said. It's an interesting one. I think, like, you, you know, we we don't we don't get to know all the facts, do we? You know, uh, um, at what behind these moves, you know. And I mean, my gut watching it from afar is that there's a lot, of, as I said a few times, a lot of agent stuff in there. But at the end of the day, he probably will cop it um, when he comes back to home park, you know. And I think because I think it's it, it's more the fact that he's had so much support, you know, uh, and and there is a chance, like. You know, I think we, we did really well last season. And I think you used the term dark horses. And, and there was like scepticism of, you know, could we go again? And I think it is shaping up that, we're, that we are going to be in, in the mix again. And so it, it is a little bit of a sour taste because he could have been like part of that and part of, a, you know, a, a squad that took our goal to the championship. So, and, and at the end of the day, I'd imagine and hope that the crowd, you know, be a big crowd, you know, at Home Park, it, you know, a big game, two teams that are up the right end of the league. So I hope you're all getting a load of stick that day and maybe he just gets a bit more, you know? Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely, mate. It should be. I'm, I'm excited to see him in a town shirt. Um, any other notes, my friend? Any other business you want to mention on Kamara as a whole? Um, can't go into no. League One rival, but good deal over, all, all around. Yeah, much. I think it's a good deal overall. And I think it's like you, you've, got to, you've got to say that, you know, for the club to sit on and let him run down his contract whilst he's not part of the plans would be, you know, irresponsible. You know, we're not... You know, no club in this league, you know, is awash with with, with money. Um, it, it would have been irresponsible for the club to do that. I think, from your perspective, you picked up a really, really good dead. He's not a panic buy. He's, he, you've got an assured top quality League One player there with a potential to play in the Championship. So I think he's a sure thing for you, and it's a good deal for us. So I think that you know, hopefully, we can both be up the right end of the table come the end. You know, um, yeah, and I think it's a decent bit of business. And actually, I have to say. You know, he's, 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 he's been a good player for Argyle, particularly last season and particularly in the sort of first half of the season. There were games where he was completely unplayable. I think of like, you know, going to Oxford away and he scored two uh, two assists at, at, at Pompey when he looked totally unplayable that night. He, he, he's definitely one of those players that's got something about him. But, you know, hope, it'd be interesting to watch him from afar and, and hopefully the move goes well for him with you guys. And from my perspective, I mean, so some fans you know, on social media get a little bit animated, didn't they? And a little bit lively and that. But listen, somebody's come in and offered him 
a sizable amount more money for the job he does. And he said, yes, thank you. I'm off and Argyle have done all right financially. And hopefully we can bring in, we've also, we, we've brought in a striker today as well. And uh, I, I think, I think we all end up all right at this one. I think so too, mate. And I'm going to put you on the spot here, but um, does he have a song? Is Plymouth Argyle fans today? You've got a song for him? That yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty boring. It's just an old Panuche Camara. So I'm sure you guys can come up with something more inventive yeah. than that one. Yeah. There's no, that's, that's not much of a challenge for you, but yeah, no, no he's, I think I, I, I would I would wager decent money that he'll be a fan's favourite in a short period of time. Sounds good. Sounds like a good move all around, as we said. Chris, well, thanks so much for joining me. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on this one. Panucci Kanamara is a Nava 2. I can't speak. <laughs> I'm just going to end it there. I'm just going to end yeah. it there. <laughs>